spearheaded by Leinster rugby players, brothers and competitors, Harry and Ross Byrne, who are taking teams on a virtual run from the 2nd to the 16th of August from Dublin to Rome, covering the host cities of the Six Nations Championship. We have the Dublin Simon Run at Home. On registration, participants will automatically be assigned to Team Ross or Team Harry, with Ross and Harry acting as team captains. Each team will work toward the collective goals of running from the Aviva to the Stadio Olimpico in Rome and back covering the host stadiums of the Six Nations, 4,364 kilometres to be precise, with a team that has clocked up the most kilometres by August 16th, winning the race. Runners and walkers of all ages and abilities are invited to take part, and you can register now to clock your miles for Dublin Simon's Run at Home with Team Harry and Team Ross. And if you don't have time, to run, you can buy some kilometres for your favourite team in the Dublin Simon Run at Home. And you can visit dubsimon.ie forward slash at home for more details. And as you can tell, this thing is up and running. Ross, first of all to you, how are you getting on with this? Uh, Harry's actually in the lead, which oh. is, so I don't know, maybe he's buying a few cheeky kilometres here and there. Uh, so uh, I need my team to... Uh, up their efforts slightly, or else try and sign up a few more people uh, and try get an extra walk in here or there. Uh, hopefully the weather stays clear as well, so the the rain isn't pulling people off. <laughs> this must feel pretty good, Harry. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. To be honest, <laughs> definitely enjoying it. Um, we'll see how we go. Anyway, I'd say it'll even up in a while, but um, yeah, no, enjoying being in the league at the moment. But it's early days. Um, and what is it about you? Do you think that that people have decided to, to to join on your team rather than Ross's team? I'd love to say they didn't pick me, but unfortunately it's randomly selected. So I don't know. Maybe the organizers have just rigged it in my favor. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing I actually forgot to ask, lads, this is the third time we've been chatting. I actually forgot to ask, like, how are you guys at running in general? I know you're not, obviously, you're a professional athlete, so you're not supposed to be doing anything like this and you're not actually running as part of this. But Ross, if, if, if I were to ask you first, like, are you fond of the old 5K or the 10K? Is, is endurance your sort of thing? Uh, certainly not the 10k and 5k. Even thing, <laughs> anyway, you've got an engine. Uh, <laughs> we're not built for the, the long distance running, that's that's for sure. <laughs> you're, you're the same, Harry. Yeah, when COVID actually came first and we were in lockdown, I tried to do that 5k and then my calves for the next week were in bits, <laughs> couldn't walk, we're like rocks. So, not my speciality either, to be honest. Well, you're going to have to tell us what was your 5k time that left your rocks like rocks or your calves like rocks, I should oh, say. It was slow. I actually couldn't tell you. It was very slow. Are <laughs> <laughs> our, uh, our out generally fast, Ross? Um, not us. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, pro- probably depends what, what team they play for. Um, <laughs> It's probably changed a little bit in the last few years. The position's probably changed. You've probably got more players who are probably more athletes, let's say, playing 10 than the traditional game managers, let's say. Well, well that's it. You've got to be able to manage the game so well. You've got to let the ball do the work. There's no need for you to be tiring yourself out. Just, just kick that ball. Exactly. <laughs> Play smart. <laughs> yeah. How, how, how do you manage to disguise it yourself, Harry, if you're playing? Any, any, any tricks for disguising maybe the... The, 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 the rocks or the calves turn into rocks after a period of time? Uh, no, yeah, I suppose then you just try to survive. But <laughs> if you go, yeah, after about 50 minutes, 60 minutes, a lot of the times your calves start cramping and stuff and you're in bits. But as Ross says, that's when it's time to kick the ball and give it to someone else. <laughs> yeah, for, for people who've been tuned in for the last few weeks, they know that you're getting back up and running. Uh, preseason has started again. And I'm kind of interested in what you guys actually do on a day-to-day basis Ross we, we might start with you but like I'm, I'm really interested in the art of kicking what, what are you doing on a day-to-day basis to, to hone that skill uh at the moment not doing much at all to be honest just because we're kind of been straight back into it and we're probably running a lot more than we would be so I suppose we'll probably pick up pick it up a bit more um as we get closer to the actual season but uh, I probably wouldn't do as much as as a lot of people would think um it's more probably doing a little bit less, but making sure it's good quality. And that would kind of be how I would have my week. And I wouldn't really have a set number of of kicks or certain kicks I need to hit during the week. Once I'm kind of happy with it in my own head, um, going into the game, I'm generally pretty pretty comfortable. What does a good quality kicking workout look like? 
Um, it would probably depend on if it's if it's post tr- a tough training session or not, or if it's a day off. It's obviously a bit easier because you're refresher and you can get um, get more done. But again, it might depend who we're playing in terms of what our kicking strategy might be for the week in terms of our restarts or kicking out of hand and what areas of the pitch we're looking to target. And then obviously goal kicking um, is generally just if you're going well, it's probably just trying to stay in that rhythm. And then if you find you're pulling a few to the left or pushing a few to the right or whatever it is, just trying, I suppose, fix that a uh, little tweak and just trying to make yourself as comfortable as possible. I suppose a bit like how people go to the driving range and <laughs> trying to fix the swing. Um, but just making sure really you're confident is probably the biggest thing. Um, so then when it comes to the game, you're not standing up praying it's going to go over as opposed to knowing it's going to go over really is the biggest thing. And is training almost always a sign of how you're going to play at the weekend? Like when you have a bad training session and all of a sudden come away from a match and like, actually when the whistle blew, I, I was on it. Uh, yeah, it's probably strange. Uh, even I suppose as a team, sometimes we train terribly and you're going a bit worried into the game and then you end up playing really well. Or even in, so from my own perspective, in the warm-up, sometimes I've, I can't hit a barn door, sometimes off the tee, like it's, it's mad. And then I kick 100%. So I think it is, so much of it is um, just down to your own head, really. Um, and I suppose mentally, if you can get around that and be confident in yourself, then because it's, it's, you don't get any points for kicks in the warm up or in training. It's, it's the only ones in the games that matter. So I suppose just trying to get them right. It's really interesting. Yeah, Harry. What about you? What What is your routine if you have one at the moment? I suppose we'd be when we're in the normal season. We'd probably so we'd train on a Monday and Tuesday. Probably before myself and Ross actually would just like just before training for like five minutes, just be kicking out a hand to each other. But Wednesday would be our day off normally, and then on our day off we do a, generally a full kicking session for like. 40 minutes, 45 minutes, where you do a bit of everything, whether it's kicking out of hand, as Ross said, depending who you're playing, you kind of go to if what defensive system they kind of run or what players you might want to target, for example, you might do certain kicks to suit that um, and restart similarly. And then just goal kicking on the exact same. Yeah, even Ross talking about the swing thoughts there, it's the same as golf. I always find when I'm thinking is when I'm kicking at my worst. Uh, so <laughs> right. I always find if I'm feeling good, I'm not thinking at all. And just doing it, that's when I'm at my best generally. And he said, I've I've had similar experiences. I think it was, was it Zebra last year? I think I missed, I've probably hit 20 kicks in the warm-up. I think I missed like 16 or 17. And then then the game comes around and I think I was seven out of eight or eight out of eight or something like that. So it's just, sometimes I think just when the whistle goes and you're just kind of feeling it, you're like, then it's fine. It's, it's a weird kind of thing to describe. I kind of always struggle to describe it, but it's kind of just, it's kind of a feel thing for me as opposed to people would always be kind of talking about process and stuff. I just, if I'm feeling good, generally they go over. <laughs> it's kind of a flow state, is it? Is it? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. People talk about that a bit. I, I'd be like that as well when I'm playing. I think I'm, when I'm not thinking, I'm probably playing at my best. Like, um, probably obviously I'm thinking, but just don't not consciously think about just kind of doing it, which is the exact same with kicking, to be honest. When I kick badly in games, I'm, thinking about something I've done wrong or that's when the swing thoughts come in and that's when the trouble starts. So less is more for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to ask if you do uh, much work on the mental side, like even in, in terms of like uh, away from the pitch, but it, it sounds like actually the more work you put into it or the more you feel like you're working on it, it's kind of like a counterproductive process. Is that fair to say? Uh, potentially, yeah. Well, like there is a bit of mindfulness and stuff that I've, We've tried before. They did wrong class and answer. I don't. I wouldn't be massively into it though, to be honest. Like kind of similar to Ross. Like I just feel if I'm feeling good, the confidence is there. Then, then I'm generally good to go. And, and that seems to be the thing, Ross. When it comes to highly specialized positions like yourselves, it, there is no one size fits all approach. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I like how Harry's saying he gets in the, the flow state there. He's Harry just gets bored when he does too much of the same thing. That's why he's saying he doesn't think about it. Yeah, uh, Farrell, the kicking coach, actually hates me at times because I'll just be doing mental kicking training. He distracts so, all like, the other kickers. <laughs> it's like, will you leave? Will you go away? <laughs> uh, but no, I think it is. Yeah, it is. I don't think it's... Uh, there's no one process for, for everyone. I think everyone's a little bit different. Um, and it's probably just trying to find what's best for you. Um, and what works for you now might not work for you in six months' time as well. So it's it's probably just trying to find 
get yourself in a rhythm and then maintain that as best as possible for as long as possible. And then you might need to tweak a little bit um, because even you can get, it, it can get a little bit repetitive or um, I don't know if, if you get your body gets bored is the right thing to say, but I suppose even just to kind of keep yourself fresh and um, have little cues here and there. And just so I suppose you keep, keep yourself, I suppose, focused really. What, what would your cue be? Uh, it could probably vary, to be honest, on different different things. Uh, it could be just really simple things like trying to make good contact with the ball. Like, as in, I wouldn't really have like loads of technical cues. Like, as Harry's kind of saying, like we probably wouldn't really be like I don't know if someone was to analyze our actual kicking would be very technical in terms of we need to approach the ball here and there. Probably not. <laughs> Uh, it's probably just even how we've grown up just kind of kicking the ball back and forth if it's a football or whatever uh, when we're younger and stuff so it's more just kind of getting myself into a comfortable position I know get myself into a good position and make good contact with the ball um, and then sort of like it'd just be little things like that uh, nothing too complicated to be honest that, that's really interesting that, that, that's really interesting inside. Uh, you mentioned there that you're in pre-season. I mean, like when we were talking about the Dublin Simon run at home there a moment ago and your ability or otherwise to be able to do this. I presume after a little bit of Leinster pre-season training, you guys would be absolutely fine to do this. Uh, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if it was in three weeks' time, we'd be, we'd be winning, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but the event of running we're doing at the moment, yeah, I would, I would definitely hope so. <laughs> Because when, when we talk to people from a whole range of sports, especially after they finish their careers, they always talk maybe about in rugby, the, the amateur days or in GAA, basically all the time up until like 2009, 2010, they always talk about pre-season just being the, the, just a horrible, horrible place to be. But I assume, Harry, that's not how a professional setup works in 2021. You all come back in at the start of, of the summer and in pretty decent, Nick. Uh, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so no, yeah. The first three weeks, you're definitely working off a bit of a belly or something, but <laughs> it comes with me quickly, no. uh, but no, yeah, no matter. I don't think it matters any of the sport. I think pretty much everyone is pre season is pretty much hell when it's that hard, like, but um, especially when you're in the heat like that. But it's a necessary evil, unfortunately. <laughs> We, um, we got both of your takes on the kicking in the Lions this time last week, and there was a lot more kicking, as, as it turned out, uh, in the, the second test. Uh, how do you see the, the final test going? Harry, we might start with you. So, no, it's interesting. They're, they're pretty physical, the South Africans, aren't yeah. they? And the 6-2 split reverting back to type definitely worked for them. So, I don't know. Like, I think it's going to be very tight. Obviously, Lions as well, the back line picking Bundy as well, getting a bit more physicality in the centre, I think, moving Robert to 13 would be interesting. Um, they obviously know each other very well. So I'd say a few partnerships that are kind of, hopefully you think, developing a bit. And um, I don't know, it's tough to call. It'll be interesting to see, to be honest. Listen, I mean, there was so many breaks in play uh, last mm -hmm. Saturday and the way you guys are talking today, that would sit you guys down to the ground. Uh, Ross, like, I mean, two hours and 15 minutes to play, 80 minutes of rugby. That's easy. Oh, God, it's it was painful to watch. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's everything we, everything we don't want uh, in rugby. Um, but unfortunately, it's it's kind of the way it's gone a little bit lately. Um, the first half was well over an hour. Um, so it's, uh, hopefully this game is a bit more open and Dan Bigger gets the pass ball more than three times, which would be... Um, <laughs> it's just interesting, I suppose, which way the Lions go. Because, you know, everyone knows what way South Africa are going to play. Um, and it's it's hard to argue, considering they won the World Cup playing that way. Um, so it would be interesting to see if the Lions do play a bit more openly. Um, in some of their selections as well. Um, even players on the bench they have, obviously, with Sam Simmons and Finn Russell, you would, it would suggest that that's what they're going to try and do in the last 20 minutes, maybe. Um, so... It'll be interesting to see if they can, I suppose, hang in maybe until then and then maybe try and open the game up. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be an absolute cracker, no doubt, this Saturday. But the big clash, the big rugby clash, of course, is uh, Team Ross, Team Harry at the moment. <laughs> Ross trailing. Uh, that, that is the, the big rugby news this morning. Just to remind you that it's spearheaded by Leinster rugby players, brothers and competitors, Harry and Ross Byrne. They were taking teams on a virtual run which began on the 2nd of August, but you can still sign up. It's going into the 16th of August from Dublin to Rome, 
covering the host cities of the Six Nations Championship. It is the Dublin Simon run at home. And on registration, participants will automatically be assigned to Team Ross or Team Harry, with Ross and Harry acting as team captains. Each team will then work towards the collective goals of running from the Aviva Stadium to the Stadio Olimpico in Rome and back covering the host cities of the Six Nations with the team that has clocked up the most kilometres by August 16th, winning the race. Runners and walkers of all ages and abilities are invited to take part and you can absolutely still register now and continue to register over the next little while. Clock your miles for Dublin Simons Run at Home with Team Harry and Team Ross. And remember, if you don't have time to run, you can buy some kilometres for your favourite team in the Dublin Simon Run at Home. Just visit dubsimon.ie forward slash run at home. Harry Byrne, Ross Byrne, thank you so much. Thanks very much, cheers.